In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all of the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place but they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon where they became servants of the king of Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths. During all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord the God of heavens has given me, and he, is, he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. remember 
letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works, so that no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. 
For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. How are you? Very well, thank you. Leitare Sunday. And this is why you see the rose vestment. We are called to rejoice because we are now in the midst of Lent. But we see that we are preparing for Holy Week celebrations and Easter. It is important that we have this celebration given to us by the Church. Why? Because Lent sometimes, as we've talked about, can be difficult, which is good. But not overwhelming, with great hope and joyful anticipation that the end will come and we will receive new life again. And so you see there is a brightness here, an excitement, a joyful anticipation with a variety of color and also with a little bit of ornamentation with the flowers as well. That there is great hope, new life, just a little bit away. But we still have our part to do, and so we need to stay focused. Just as we heard a couple weeks ago, certainly, that Jesus brought Peter, James, and John up the mountain to be transfigured before them to give them a sense of hope and to take away that scandal, the Church gives us this celebration of Laetare Sunday in saying, don't worry, that is not the end of the story but it is an essential and integral part to the story, as we hear in the Gospel this weekend. To ask you another question, consider this. Within the context of your family, how do you know that you are loved? Do you consider that? Do you sit with that? Do you pray about that? Or is it just a thought that I get up, I go about my business day in and day out, and that's it? And we can say, oh yes, so-and-so loves me, and I love so-and-so. But do we live that with an intentionality? It is important for us to ask ourselves these questions. How do I know that I'm loved? How do I know this person cares for me, is telling me the truth, is looking out for me, is providing the good for me if he is able? That's what it means to love. How do I know that? Perhaps we have certainly several stories, pictures, Kodak moments to support this. I know that I'm loved. And hopefully it should not be too difficult within our experience 
horizontally with each other. But as we hear in the gospel, God sent his only son into the world because he loved us that much. Oftentimes we have the horizontal piece down, the cross beam. And yet I will ask you another question. How do you know that God loves you? And not just us generally. Well, Father, I've always been taught that. God is love. God loves me. How is God loving you? And you? And me? You're the only one who can answer that question. Because God loves us very personally. And that is the vertical beam of the cross. Us and the Lord. And it intersects right in the middle at the sacred heart where the Lord is center. Everything hinges on Him. Absolutely everything. All the time and always. And so when we're having difficulty, we need to go to Him. Be drawn back into Him. To go there. To realize. Sometimes we're at different points on the cross. We seem to have the coordinates. Different moments. And perhaps we love to be more on the horizontal beam. Or more on the vertical beam. But we need to be right in the middle where there is the sacred heart of Jesus. Where everything flows from that sacred heart. That's how we know that we're loved. And that's how we step out in love. And we are transformed by that. Consider that. Over the rest of this beautiful season of Lent, come in here and gaze up on the crucifix and spend some time asking the question, how is it possible that you love me that much? And yet you do. Somebody just recently said to me, Father, it's too good to be true. And I said, you're right. And yet it is. It's true. But we can only make that statement when we've experienced it in our life. That our Heavenly Father sent His Son, who He loved so much, for me. And not just for me. It's not just me and Jesus. But it's not just Jesus and all of us. That's why we must always see that perfect image of the Father's love in the cross. It's there. That is the symbol of our Lenten journey. That is who we are. We are called to love like that. And we cannot love and hand on that love if we have not first received it, and been transformed by it first. It's powerful. It's such a powerful reality and image to sit there and be with the Lord in that manner. Hopefully all of us have a crucifix or many in our home. And go to it. Meditate on it. Spend time with it. And be filled with the wisdom and knowledge and love and understanding of God. It's not something we have to be afraid of. It's something we're called to love and to cherish. 
How do you know that you are loved? I could sit up here all day and just point to the crucifix. Point there again and again. Or in coming to any of your homes, you could tell me, Father, look at this picture and listen to this story. But it has to become personal. We have to say, yes, I have been transformed and I have a personal experience. And that is how I know that I am loved. Spend Lent, the rest of this Lent, and personalize that reality. Allow him to transform you vertically and horizontally and to be filled with the hope of the cross and the new life that is to come thereafter. Praise be Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When we were dead in our sins, God brought us to life in his Son, lifted up on the cross for us. Through that crucified Redeemer, let us draw near to our loving Father. For the Church, on her pilgrimage in this world, especially the suffering Church of Silence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mercy and justice among peoples of different creeds and cultures, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women, who show that they prefer darkness to light by their evil deeds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are putting off making their confessions because of fear, laziness, or pride, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have passed from this life into the mercy of God, especially Marcel Leclerc, Jr., for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, our petitions are numberless, but we know your mercy is eternal. We unite them to the infinite sacrifice of Jesus lifted up on the cross for us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just by way of reminder, there will be two collections this evening. The first collection will be the regular Sunday collection and the second envelope, and the second collection will be specifically for St. Michael School, and the basket will be passed twice. Thank you. Please join in singing Flow, River, Flow at number 656 in your books.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks to Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, 
so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in singing, Shepherd Me, O God, at number 470 in your books. That's 470. Thank you. 
Christ be beside me at number 401.
There are several announcements. Again, by way of reminder, Soup and Stations continues on Friday, March 20th. Soup will be made by um, the committee from St. Bridget's Kitchen, which is served at 5.30 p.m. downstairs in Monsignor Rand Hall, with stations beginning here in the church at 6.15. Also, immediately after Mass, we are going to be having the St. Patrick Day uh, Parish Dinner downstairs in Monsignor Rand Hall. So please, I hope all of you will come over. Uh, there will be live entertainment, but also if you're a little bit nervous about the weather or you need uh, to be somewhere, um, you have a previous engagement, there are to-go containers as well. So stop by and get some excellent food uh, and do it that way. But if you can stay, please come and stay with us. It is always a great uh, time together. Also, you will notice in the bulletin, please take one home with you, that on Tuesday, this is uh, quite out of the ordinary, but on Tuesday, which is St. Patrick Day, uh, there will be Mass at 7.30 a.m. Uh, this Tuesday, March 17th, so just to draw your attention to that. Then the following day, uh, this Wednesday, March 18th, at the school Mass at 8.45 a.m., Bishop Coyne will be here to celebrate that Mass. And so if you are available or have some time that you could rearrange your schedule, it is always most wonderful when the Bishop is here. Uh, it is going to be his first time here, uh, the first time uh, for all of us, and so it would be great if we could show our love and support for him in that manner. So once again, that will be Wednesday, uh, March 18th at 8.45 for the school mass, which he will celebrate. Also, you will note in the back on the table, there is a sign-up sheet uh, because um, I will be renting a bus. Uh, to bring people up to the Chrism Mass. There are limited spots available, um, but um, please, if you would like to, sign up for that. So the bus will leave uh, here, the parking lot, on Tuesday, March 31st. That's the day of the Chrism Mass. We'll leave at 7.30 a.m. Uh, for the Chrism Mass at 11 at St. Joseph Co. Cathedral in Burlington. Uh, there will be a bag lunch that is provided, and then uh, we will be returning hopefully by 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So it is an all-day thing, but it is a wonderful uh, opportunity. I believe the 7th and 8th graders are going from the school, which is great, and so we have an opportunity to be together uh, once again with our bishop. So uh, please just make note of that. and. The rest of the specifics are on the sign-up sheet as well, just in case I forgot anything. Um, and all I would ask is that if you do sign up, um, if you would offer a $15 contribution just to defray the cost a little bit of uh, the expense for the day. It's approximately $1,700, so um, $1,500, or $1,500, $15. Uh, if someone would like to write a check for $1,500, I would take that too. But certainly $15 just to help defray the cost of that would be most appreciated if you, uh, for each person who signs up. Also, St. Michael High School will be having an informational meeting, or we should say the school will be having an informational meeting about the high school, the ninth grade, on Wednesday this, this week, March 18th at 6 p.m. in the school uh, classroom and conference room. And again, those details are in the bulletin. But if you're inquiring in any way about the ninth grade, um, please come to that informational meeting. And finally, students and families will be at all the doors after this Mass and throughout the weekend handing out information regarding our St. Michael School annual appeal. So if you have come to do that, if you could make your way to the back. So if somebody hands you something as you're exiting, please take it most graciously. Uh, there is a letter in there and everything uh, that goes to help support the school um, that we do year in and year out, and it is very, very important. So um, if you would please accept that on your way out over to supper, that would be great. Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, 
that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in singing our recessional song, Beyond the Days, at number 137. <laughs>